Hi. How's it going? Um, I've had a, for, for such a dark life, I've had a pretty fortunate life. And the reason that is is because I've, I've had teachers in my life. Probably the most important teacher in my life has been my grandmother. Um, I talk a lot about her, and I've probably told this story a hundred times, but, uh, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, my grandmother is the type of person, she doesn't throw anything away. And because of this, she has a closet stuffed with old report cards, which she uses to remind me where my weaknesses are. <laughs> and <laughs> she came to me one day with a stack of books that I'd written in as a kid. And, uh, and she said, oh, here are your diaries. And I said, those are journals. <laughs> and uh, for a long time, I, I had no interest in looking at any of them because I thought my, my childhood was so dark and depressing. How could any of that stuff be of value? But the more she talked about it, the more my curiosity gained, and I started to crack open these books and, and look through them and look through what I'd written. None of it was poetry. It was just my thoughts on paper. But what I saw was... For a long time, I'd been looking at my life like it was a kind of rock, and there was just this hard outer exterior, this, this, the, just this dark shell. And when I, when I started to dig past and, and see my past, I, that rock cracked open, and what I noticed were that there were all these different layers that make up who I am. It became more of a geode, uh, a mineral, like mineral base, all these separate layers. And I started to see those, those connections of... Uh, of where I started to, where, where I've come. This morning I got to talk to a bunch of students about a, a project we did uh, called Instructions for a Bad Day. And that was about a community. They lost a number of kids due to teen suicide. And the community decided this was important enough to come together and we created a video. Because what I do when, when, I'm, when I'm stuck or when I'm depressed in life, I find a project, I find something to do. And I thought, this is how I can help these kids is just give them a project, something, something to work on. And, and it's been pretty amazing the more I say yes to things in my life, how much more my life opens up. I'm constantly blown away by where art has taken me. I get to share the stage with incredible luminaries. And, uh, and recently I've been on tour with uh, David Suzuki, who's doing his last national tour as part of the Blue Dot Tour. Uh, and they asked me if I would... Thank you. David Suzuki Foundation asked me if I would write a piece that sort of talks about why the world is so precious and, and what it is we're missing. And I couldn't talk about that without talking about connection. Not, not just the connection we have to ourselves, but the connection we have to, to others and to the world around us. And so I wanted to do uh, this piece for you. And this piece was really born out of something that was written in one of those notebooks that I'd written in as a kid. All it said was, when your heart is broken, make art with the pieces. Connection requires our participation. Uh, so I'll thank you for listening to this piece. My mouth is super dry now. <laughs> oh, you sweet little bloom. You peanut butter sandwich, you. Uh, <laughs> All right. Like many, I love to look at the stars. I love the fact that ours is just one among many. What I love about astronomy is that our constellations tell a story. Our constellations were born from mythology. Mythology was our first attempt to understand the world in which we live. We put a god in everything, and those gods would give us our reasons. Like, why is the sky blue? Who chose blue? The gods. How come men have nipples? It's the will of the gods. Why does this wine taste so good? There's a god in it. And for a while, there was not a single thing with the, which the gods could not explain. We believed that their anger gave us lightning, their despair gave us rain. We whispered our desires to them, believing that their charity would sustain us. But those gods were just stories. But stories became a large part of how we learn. They burn lessons into our memories. 
They become a part of how we remember. And we can remember almost everything. Right down to that first unbearable bee sting. When we learn that this tiny blue marble we call the world has rules. Rule number one, don't screw with the bees. An unforgettable lesson brought to you by your memories. I remember that I grew up loving mythology. I remember the story of the Titan Atlas, who was also the god of astronomy. The original global positioning system sending sailors safely home by telling them which constellations to keep starboard. He taught us about the stars. He did all this while he held up ours, our pale blue dot. But Atlas is caught between two different tellings of his story. In the first, he leads a rebellion against Olympus and is then sentenced to hold the heavens on his shoulders for eternity. In the second story, he is chosen to be the guardian of the pillars that hold up the earths and sky. I prefer the second story. It means that the world is not a punishment, but rather a responsibility. But how can just one be charged with such a burden? How can just one be responsible for all this? When I think of Atlas, I think of a single drop of rain. I think how unfair it would be to hold a single drop solely responsible for making the entire world clean again. I remember how my grandmother tried to explain our world to me. She told me a story. She said the ground and the sky, they love each other. But they don't have arms, so rain, that's just how they hold one another. I began to see how the earth and sky need each other. But I wondered about us. In this perfect design, where do we fit? Which piece of the puzzle are we? Like constellations, I began to see a connection between dots. I numbered my thoughts and drew lines from one to the next. I began to see us in the context of a bigger picture, sharpening the blur slowly into focus. We are Atlas. I saw that this pale blue dot, this one world, is all we get. There will be no reset button, no new operating system or downloadable upgrade. We will not be allowed to trade in our old world for a new one with climate control or better fuel efficiency. We get one shot at this. Dismiss all reports of second chances, we get one. And yet we draw advances on our future as if we won't one day be held accountable, we will. We are. The human race runs toward a finish line emblazoned with the words too far and wonders, will we ever cross it? Have we already? We are faced with a seemingly impossible task. And it's okay to be afraid. Our dilemma stands before us like a mountain carved into a blockade. The sheer magnitude of our problem would be enough to dissuade anyone. How do we save the world? We lay in our beds, curled into question marks, wondering, what can we do? Where do we start? Is hope a glue crazy enough to hold us together while we're falling apart? The burden seems immense. But we can do this. We must take the martial arts approach to loving our planet, love as self-defense. Forget about the cost. There will be no other thing as worth saving as this. Nothing more important, nothing as precious. This is home. All of our stories start and end here. We are sheltered within an atmosphere that has given us every breath we will ever take. Every monument we will ever make has come from the flesh of our planet. Water like blood, skin like soil, bone like granite. It is not a myth. There is no debate. Facts are in. Fact is, there's never been any question. We are facing crisis. We dismiss the truth, not because we can't accept it. But because having to commit ourselves to change is a scary prospect for anybody. The most alarming part of the statement, we are facing crisis, isn't the word crisis. It's the word we. Because those two letters take responsibility away from one and rest it squarely on the shoulders of everybody. We are Atlas now. But our strength will come from finding a way to share and shouldering the responsibility of turning the impossible into somehow. Somehow, we will do this. We can do this. We can dismiss apathy. We can reject uncertainty. We can be the new chapter in our story. We will not see change immediately. We must act in faith. As the hour hand grips the minute hand and they land on the 11th hour, we must believe like the seed that change is possible. The seed never sees the flower. It grows knowing that it must become more than what it was. It changes because in growth, all of its potential can be unlocked. Change is like rain. It starts with a single drop. Just one. 
Like our pale blue dot, caught in an endless waltz called gravity, we circle the sun wondering who, if anyone, left the light on. We are constellations drawn upon the earth. We are connected to one another. We are bound. We must behave as the arms that connect the ground of the sky. We must try to be more like the rain. Our stories may differ. Our goal is the same. How do we say our pale blue dot? We act as the rain, realizing that each individual drop is as equal and important as any. We act as one. Now we are many. <laughs>